What do Mattel, Banana Republic, ButcherBox, and Glossier all have in common? They power their businesses with Shopify. Shopify is the most innovative and scaled commerce platform on the planet that also happens to have the best converting checkout on the planet. And that's no industry secret. That's Shopify. Learn more at shopify.com slash enterprise. Hey guys, welcome to the podcast. And today I've got Misha and Misha Sermova. She's coming out of the Czech Republic and she is a, she is a energy coach, which I'm really fascinated to talk about. And she empowers ambitious women to become the CEO of their life. She's also a energy coach and mentor. She's got workshops. She's got leadership experience and she's going to teach us today how we can harness our energy and improve it to improve our finances, business, careers, relationships, and lives. I'm really excited about this episode. So Misha, welcome. Thank you, Christopher. Very nice and happy to be here. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Start off by uh, just introducing yourself briefly, basically what you told me, and I'm excited to dive into the to the questions. Mm-hmm. Of course. So I will, uh, I'm thinking what to say as you already introduced me, but to say even a little bit more is that, as you said, I focus mainly on helping ambitious women to live their dream life. And often the women with, uh, who come to me are already on their success path, if I may say so, but they often feel exhausted. They feel burnout. They are very tired. They have it all, but they still feel like maybe not, or they seek for more and they are stuck at certain levels. So they are like different, different topics with which the women can come to me. And then how I help them is that through the work with energy and spirituality, as you said, we tap into their subconscious, into their energy field, energy body, emotions, and so on. And I look at what is it that is stopping them and how to release the blocks and really let them to live what they want to live in ease and joy. So without the, the feeling of burnout. Really fascinating. And so when I, when you talk about energy work, cause I've always been fascinated in this area cause I'm a empath and intuitive and we'll talk about in, intuition. So my, my first question is how is your energy field different than, for example, like the law of attraction? The different from karma, from dharma, from your destiny? How does that energy field play into these factors? That's a very interesting question. I love that because all the topics, all the names which you said, they are actually part of my my teaching. It. I'm not the only one who can that, of course. So dharma is one thing. So how I look at it is I help my clients, myself, everyone who comes, comes to me to hear their soul. So from all the outer noise, which is all around us to come back to us and hear our soul's wisdom. And that can be also translated as Dharma, right? That like we live our purpose, our soul tells us what is it that we want to live. And then I also work with karma. Actually, I work a lot with karmic connections, karmic baggage if we want karmic uh, yeah whatever car like we bring from our past lives i consider as a karmic point of view so i work with that as well i think there is really broad broad area like in spirituality in what we can have a look at so i because at the beginning when i started to look in our aura in our chakra system and heal through that and block the chakric system but then as I was on the path, or I'm on the path already for some years, then I always, or I should say the opportunities open to me. I'm invited by different spirit guides, different beings to learn more and more. And then I add different puzzles to my teaching. So yeah, I have to answer a simple, sorry for that, but that's how I work with my clients. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Cause it's just, I'm just trying to reconcile this because sometimes a lot of things like it happened in, in my life and I'm like, yeah, if there's nothing I could have done to prevent this. And a lot of times it's, that's your car, that's your dharma to, for, so that you will fulfill whatever your destiny and you can't escape that no matter what path or choice you always lead to 
which was what um, I was asking. Actually, but... I have a good, maybe good comment on that one. That's a really good thought. I believe the same, but I believe, so I believe that our soul comes to the earth with certain agenda, certain dharma, like the path to do, to take. But then when you work with energy, you can elevate your vibrations and make the path easier. So it can still be the same tasks, which the, which our soul come here uh, to do, but it can feel very different, easier, more enjoy when we work with energy the way I do. But yes, still we have to somehow also suffer sometimes and do whatever our soul came here for. Yeah. The next question I have for you is, do you ever see, because basically it sounds like your energy field and your energy aura, and we'll talk about the different modalities, but basically it's got, you've got your, you've got your triggers, you've got your emotional trauma. And as a result, how you process that, basically your actions will dictate your karma. So do you ever find, I'm not sure of the correct term, but you ever find like a, for example, someone who's got a certain destiny, but basically they've basically life's beating them down. Either they're like drug addicts or raped or abused or neglected or broke, whatever. And then they can't seem to get out of that. And, and you ever see like their energy aura and feel off so they can't fulfill their destiny. Do you ever see that? Is that quite common in your practice? Mm -hmm. That's okay. If I understand your question correctly, you're asking me if a certain person suffers a lot through abuse and similar, and then if there is a way out of it for them, or is that the question or? <laughs> yeah. Or not? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I usually, I would say, yeah, most of the clients come with a bit different story to me, but of course it doesn't mean that I never met people who also suffer through abuse and so on. Often people who look like they have it all and they never were victims actually carry some trauma from abuse because what we call abuse is really, the scale is huge. Of course, it's different if we suffer through smaller abuse and war trauma, for example. I don't want to generalize it. I think that's very, like, there is a huge scale and I don't want to, I think they are all heavy topics. Yeah, but I think what I can help with is to increase the vibrations in the way how you then handle the situation. And potentially if you escape that uh, situation, then really get over it and so that you are able to do your, the actions in your life differently. So then you really like don't continue, but shift. So depends, but then it really depends on, on the state of the person. What do Mattel, Banana Republic, ButcherBox, and Glossier all have in common? They power their businesses with Shopify. Shopify is the most innovative and scaled commerce platform on the planet that also happens to have the best converting checkout on the planet. And that's no industry secret. That's Shopify. Learn more at shopify.com slash enterprise. Yeah. And my next question is, how does, so somebody's, uh, you talk about raising vibration in energy field. How does one start to begin to repair their energy field? It's actually very easy. It's not that difficult. I think everyone can do that and everyone can be a healer for themselves. What is enough at the beginning is just a small meditation. You can find any meditation on, on YouTube or you can uh, get my free meditation and just go there with the intention to align your energy field and to protect your energy and to balance it. And this is already a small step which can make big difference if you, for example, if you repeat this, it can be really 10 minutes, five minutes per day. It doesn't have to be big, but the intention is really important. And that's how a person can start. Interesting meditation. I've heard of Reiki energy healers and just like various, talk about how like the, but like from my, from traumas, how the body stores traumas and how that influences the energy field and how you can begin to 
pinpoint the areas of the body that are storing the trauma and begin to heal and release that in what different modalities. Yes, yes, you get it's it's amazing topic because we often and the earlier we start to to cleanse the better because if we are 60 and then we carry all of the trauma stored in our bodies then it can be quite a heavy work. Uh, so that's also one thing with which I can help is to release the the blocks from the energy body, the the different trauma which influence our our being. Yeah, it's also like from different emotions are stuck in our chakric system. The physical issues are also like linked to different chakra in, in our energy body. So it's really beautiful teaching. And of course, I would say um, what is important is to combine both, right? So the energy work, spiritual, Reiki, whatever tool a person choose. But then, of course, do not de- ne- neglect the physical body because we still have it and we still have to take care of that. So if we're healing, our heart chakra, for example, but then it's also good to eat good food, move our body and so on. So I think it's it, like both are very important. And that's what I see that often once people get to the spiritual path, then somehow they forgot that we have the physical body still. Interesting. My an adjacent question to that is, for example, um, for example, like my nieces and nephew, they don't, they didn't, ex- they don't experience much trauma. You know, hopefully they don't have to go through, they're very light. They're like very carefree and just they're kids. Right. And then people who meet me, I'm like more serious. And some people say I'm, in, I'm intimidating to talk to and people, my, my wife describes me as very heavy, even though I'm very light, but energetically very heavy. Mm-hmm. So. How do you like, what's really interesting is there are areas in the body that you are not consciously aware of that you are storing trauma. How do you find those areas? How do you know, for example, a yoga practice, one guy was talking about his teacher just adjusted like one small and then that released everything he was able to. So how do you begin to um, find these unconscious places that you're storing trauma? Mm. So me personally, I see it clairvoyantly, intuitively. So when I start to work with someone, I go deeply to my to myself and close my eyes. And then I start to get the download and get the information. I have to tell you, even after some years, I'm still amazed by the information which is coming to me and that it's like then true and real. And then I still believe that each of us has this ability to a certain extent, maybe not Everyone is super clairvoyant and super intuitive. We don't have to be, but at least part of us is there. At least you said you're an empath, intuitive, energy sensitive, right? And I think many of us are, and we can also practice it, come to us and try to really listen to ourselves more and more every day, little by little. We can start with easy tasks like, I don't know, am I hungry or not? Or am I thirsty or not? Those are the questions for which you always know the answer. Okay, maybe you have a sweet tooth if you want the dessert, but you know it that it's you are hungry or not. And through simple tasks, you can start to listen to your intuition, listen how it feels in your body. Maybe there is a specific area in your body or your mind or heart, how yes and how no feels. Uh-huh. And like that, we can slowly keep asking ourselves for easy and then more difficult questions. And that's how we develop our intuitiveness. And that's then how we know more and more answers. Interesting. Yeah, I love that process of intuition. And so people that, uh, for example, the the movie, uh, The Matrix really resonated with me. And it's just it's like the whole world is sleepwalking, but there's people that are aware of you, you sound awake. There's people that are living with intention. People that are sleepwalking through life, they get up, they have their routine, but they, the universe is trying to wake them up. How can they develop these abilities? Or do they have intuition or is that kind of dormant? Or how do you get these, how do you get sleepwalkers to wake up? I would maybe ask more you <laughs> or in general them if they want to be awakened, if they want to wake up, because often it's just more comfortable or at least at the beginning it's more comfortable to stay where they are because they they know that it's their comfort zone they are often complaining right everything is so wrong in their lives for them the poor victims of life but then 
they, they also take less responsibility for themselves. And I don't want to judge everyone and say everyone is the same, but it's often the case that they don't take the responsibility for their own happiness. And it's sometimes easier in a certain way. And maybe they don't necessarily want to wake up. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know what is your experience with that, but that's how I see it. Yeah. Sometimes you have events like, like basically... I think COVID was the universe's way of just waking the world up and just, hey, if we keep going down this, we're going to become extinct. We're going to kill ourselves, essentially. And sometimes it takes a divorce or uh, like a health crisis or financial scare or something just to wake you up, just to make you alert. And so you're... <laughs> the other question that comes to my mind is for empaths and intuitives and highly sensitive people with their energies. And I, I've noticed this when I go into like big cities or or into like environments that have a lot of just weird energies. How do you protect your energy and avoid these negative or lower energies zapping your energy and, and taking you down? That's, I love this question because I've been asked that also to like by many of my clients and myself, I also suffered for some time. So once I tapped more into my intuition, it was like, okay, I, I need to, because I live in a big city and yeah. Prague is quite, okay, we have 1 million inhabitants, so there are for sure bigger cities in the world. But still, I often had the feeling I need to run away. But then we often cannot really run away and it's better to deal with the situation. I developed and I was introduced to different tools which can really protect your energy. And there are different ones we can think of, like I think the basic ones or those which everyone knows, uh, crystals, using salt as a scrub or with salt baskets around your house, that can be one thing. But then there are also energy tools which can really protect your own energy, not only, yeah, crystal is somewhere representing something, but then you can really, maybe I would call it an energy cloth or energy, yeah, like a rope, which you can put on yourself or I work with protective roses, which you can install around you, refresh them every few days or something, depends how much you need, and really protect your energy. So there are tools for that, for sure. And I recommend them to use because it's, it's a game changer for me, at least. Yeah. When you say tools such as a protective cloth, is that like an actual physical one or is it like a spiritual, mental, like you, like you, I know. Spiritual. Yeah. It's more spiritual. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's more spiritual, but it, what can help for some people is to, for example, have a bracelet, which would represent this spiritual cloth. And then every time when they put it on, they know they like with the intention activated the spiritual cloth, which is a protection. Hmm. And then also what I would recommend is to do the energy cleansing. So really clean our field regularly as well from everything out there. So I do regular meditations for that, for example, for myself and for my clients too. And it's a beautiful practice. Yeah. Yeah. Like a really hot salt bath with Himalayan salt. That's really the cleanse, like the negative. The other is like kind of smud the sage, the sage is in. Sage, Palo Santo. Yeah. Yeah. You can use it all. It, it, like my house is full of like sage, Palo Santo, crystal, salt, all of that. And then also a lot of spiritual cloth on me. <laughs> yeah. I know people that they, some of them, for example, they'll, before they go into a, a very tense or for example, like the holidays are coming up and we like just weird family, weird, they, they'll intentionally, they'll set intention, like they'll only spend a certain amount of time and energy in this certain, with certain people with, with a particular energy and kind of dis distance and they'll psychically and mentally prepare for that. And so that when it comes, they, they're already ready. It doesn't just catch them off guard and trigger them and create a downward spiral. The other, another, there was another question I have. It's really fascinating because I really love talking about energy and energy work. Oh, then I like, we're I'm coming to the end. And one of the questions is, so for example, uh, I, I, I know people like stories, for example, their uh, dad, for example, females who dads were distant or they got abused or they got raped and they, or um, just some sort of trauma and they need, they're like, this manifests in their adult life as needing 
constant validation or jumping from one relationship to another, casual relationships, all of these. And they always say they can't seem to attract the right mate. And what one of my colleagues, which is really interesting, she was like, yeah, I'm not going to date anybody for a year and I'm going to work on myself. I'm going to do what you do, like help with their energy fields. And once she was able to do that, she started to attract the right types of people. So what is going on there energetically? I love the story. I'm, I'm so happy for her. That that's yeah. so, because it's a beautiful example that it's really possible to get out of, of that vicious circle and really change your life. And what is the energy work there? Yes, it's really, first of all, tap into your whatever it is where all the trauma is stored and it probably there is multiple layers. So for sure, our emotional body, our mental uh, health body or mental health area, our energy body, and probably also physical body. It depends, but there is for sure certain reactions which we might have towards our potential partner after trauma, right? Also physically, if we are more open to have physical contact or not and so on. Probably all of the layers, we need to work on them. And then, so first through energy work, I would really tap into the person, into the being, and try to see what is it that needs to be released. And then slowly insert new programming, I shall say. It's really a restart of the computer, but an upgrade actually. So first you really need to get rid of all the traumas and beliefs. Also beliefs about the lady for sure. So she has certain, or she had probably certain beliefs and then through the work, she can change them. And then as she changes the beliefs about herself and her vibrations, then she finds a different match. Yeah. It's really fascinating. I've, I've seen work like basically people that were like quiet, introverted and shy and they like, they got bullied or um, just, or even self-sabotage, like clients that uh, they, they like, like imposter syndrome is very common, especially like people that felt they were discriminated against or that type, that type of situation where they feel like they, they don't deserve it. And, and I've talked to other energy healers that help clients in this kind of limbo period where they're like on the cusp, they're progressing, they still have these, and then they do that energy work to move them to the next level, which is really, it was really fascinating because like you have to really see like the input, like how your energy, you have to do the energy work and raise your vibration. Very fascinating conversation. But I know you help the female executive entrepreneurs and all this could be also applied to finances too. How can people reach out to you and follow your social media and learn from you and so on? Yes, everyone. So females, but also Men are welcome too, if they feel like that. They can reach out to me uh, mainly on LinkedIn and Instagram. So my LinkedIn is, yeah, my name, it's Misha, M-I-C-A, M-I-S-H-A, and then Sramova, S-R-A-M-O-V-A. And then I'm very active on Instagram as well, where I'm called Misha Energy Coach. So again, M-I-S-H-A, and then Energy Coach, or... The same is also for my website, so MishaEnergyCoach.com. And there you can find various materials also for free, or you can join my monthly meditation club where I yeah, clear the energy in you and from you, or just for the private one-to-one -one collaborations. I'm also open to that one. <laughs> yeah. If we you know we, we, we didn't talk about sound therapy or other things, which is, but they're really interesting. And, and yeah, I really enjoyed this conversation. I'm always trying to just get more, understand more and um, just learn how the universe works and how to use it. And thanks so much for coming on. Great conversation. Thank you so much. Thank you.